Hey everybody, this is your friendly neighborhood survivor fella Gordon Holmes here and I've got some tips for all of you future contestants on how to smash challenge puzzles and send your hapless foes on a date with the business end of a Jeff Probe snuffer. Now, I know what you're thinking, my goodness, uh, there simply isn't enough survivor content on YouTube. Relax. Give me a break. Yeah, don't you worry about it. I, I've been wanting to do this kind of thing for a while and I finally have some time to get it done. So if you appreciate it, uh, like the video, subscribe to the channel, uh, join up with my alliance. Uh, it really does us a big favor and uh, helps us do more things in the future. Now let's take a look at my goals for this video. First of all, uh, to give you a behind the scenes look at Survivor production, this will give you a leg up on people who've never been out there, never played before, and haven't watched this video. Second, uh, some clues and tips to help you out with puzzles in general. And third, John Kerhofer and the challenge team are always coming up with new puzzles that we've never seen before. So I wanna give you an idea of how to strategize when you see a puzzle that you've never come up against before. So for those of you who don't know, in pre-COVID times, I'd get to visit Survivor once a year for a preseason junket. <laughs> If anybody has a hidden immunity idol and you want to play it, now would be the time to do so. I'm going to play it, Jeff. You have an idol? You think I'd come to tribal without an idol? Not with these people, not with you. You can check it, it's authentic. This is a hidden immunity idol. Uh, we'd interview the cast, we'd get to annoy Jeff Probst, and as revenge, uh, they'd make us run an immunity challenge against the Dream Team. Now, who was the Dream Team, you may ask? Well, they're a team of young, fit, beautiful, tan gods and goddesses whose job it is to run the challenge so they're interesting, relatively safe, and most importantly, fair. Go! You gotta get in that barrel. It's not gonna be a fun ride. Probably gonna have PTSD when she's done with this. Reliving it again out here. She's won this game and now she's out here with the press. Damn, you can do it. Look at this. Suddenly, Josh and Gordon are getting back in this. It is a massive comeback in the making for Josh and Gordon. Canada really falling apart. Over the years, weirdly, uh, the press has had quite a bit of success uh, with my personal record standing at a super impressive uh, 10 wins and two losses. Now, how are a team of out of shape, overweight reporters able to pick up these wins? Well, just like in the show, it's all about the puzzles. So with some help from the puzzle folks over at Vexel, I'm gonna walk you through seven tips that'll help you bring home immunity for your tribe. Or a tarp, who knows? Now this one may seem simple, but it is a biggie. Before the challenge gets started, Jeff will walk both tribes through the challenge individually to answer any questions they may have. Pay attention. The last thing you want is to dive into a challenge without understanding the full limitation. A great example of this is the opening challenge in Survivor South Pacific. Coach and Ozzy had to complete a puzzle where they stacked pieces on top of each other and then put a turtle on top, but neither one of them really understood the rules. They had to ask, the, like they literally had to stop the challenge to explain them to him. I was there, it was a train wreck. Know what's going on. Let the other person falter while you understand fully what you should be doing. Now, if you get the thumbs up that you're going to be taking the long flight from Los Angeles to Fiji to be on the show, and you're not studying past puzzles, you are setting yourself up for some time on the pre-jury trip, my friend. How many examples have there been of recent players who have absolutely smoked puzzles because they've been practicing at home? Also, once you're on the beach, there's a ton of downtime around camp. You should be using some of this time to study your season's logo. It can usually be found on your tribe flag or somewhere else. I mean, it's got to be somewhere. Oh, yeah, the buff. <laughs> it's on the buff. Watch it. Why is this important? Because knowing which side of the logo the octopus or the boat or the skull is on could pay big dividends down the line when you have to recreate the logo for a slide puzzle or any other kind of puzzle for that matter. Now, in my opinion, the Survivor Art team is the unsung heroes of production. Their work is gorgeous, but more important than that, it is precise. If you can figure out how they created a puzzle, it'll give you clues on how to complete that puzzle. Now, let's use this popular puzzle that I had to complete in the Winners at War preseason as an example. Yes, sir! Can reach? Okay, hold on. Oh, okay, do it. <laughs> Sangeeta Close with the up. final piece. Close it up! For the win! Can she get it in? Oh, Notice how the majority of the cuts are pointed directly to the middle, like a pizza. Mmm, pizza. 
So, when you have a piece that looks like this with two parallel sides, you know the larger side will always be pointing out. You won't have to waste time spinning the pieces around. It doesn't work for three-sided pieces, but you'll be off to a good start. So look at a puzzle, try to figure out how it's built, and use that to your advantage. Immunity challenges are crazy, hectic, stressful times. Probst is yelling at you, you got a million cameras in your face, uh, it, and it's possible if you fail, you're going to be set home that night. That's why it is key that you pay attention to where your pieces are at all times. There's a reason that the camera will follow a puzzle piece if it falls off of the board, because in the heat of the challenge, you won't think to look elsewhere for it, and you could pay for it. I had nine consecutive immunity challenge wins until I made that very mistake. The last of the, that loss uh, took place during the preseason challenge for Ghost Island and we got absolutely smoked in the physical portion. Remember pulling the rope? It was pathetic. It was so bad Andrea Belke, who was a member of the press, tried to defect mid-challenge, but we had rallied to make a comeback at the giant cube puzzle. And then we were stuck. I knew what piece we needed, I just couldn't figure out how to turn the pieces we had to get what would fit there. After we lost, we realized a piece wasn't in our pile. It was on the opposite side of the cube. It still haunts me to this day. Idiot. Now, this is a super basic strategy that most people will use for jigsaw puzzles. Ask yourself, which parts of the uncompleted puzzle are easy to locate? I'm talking corners. I'm talking sides. Using that Winners at War puzzle as an example, if you've watched the show, you know the completed puzzle is two swirling dragons. The dragon's head and tail are easily identified by the individual pieces. And if gravity isn't going to let you place those pieces immediately, put them to the side. Focus on the pieces you can use. Now, nothing is worse than when you stop making progress in a puzzle. You're doing great, and then you're stuck. Now, this may be hard to do, especially in such a tense situation, but stop, step back, and get a look at the puzzle from a distance, from a different angle, anything that can reset your brain. I wish I'd taken this advice back at the Ghost Island Challenge. I would have been able to locate that piece I needed. I wouldn't still be talking about it to this day. I would be 11-1 and 1 instead of 10-2. and 2. <sighs> And finally, the art department does a fantastic job making all of the puzzles and locks look worn and rustic and borderline crappy, but trust me, they all work perfectly fine. All of that is just for the survival aesthetic. If you feel the need to force a piece into place, it's probably in the wrong place. That exact scenario happened in the Game Changers press challenge where I was desperately trying to elbow a piece in place and Josh Wiggler, bless his heart, uh, managed to get me to relax and figure out uh, what exactly was wrong. Uh, and, and if I had forced it into place, because I could have uh, muscled it into place, the, the handles wouldn't have fit in the holes, we'd be stuck, and we definitely would have lost. Now, before I send you off to win that million dollars, here's a quick recap. First of all, know your rules. Before the challenge starts, Jeff Probst will walk your tribe through every station. Ask him questions. Be a good troop boy and learn your rules. Also, study all of the puzzles that have been featured in the game. Many of them have easy-to-follow strategies. Also, study the season's logo. It's almost always used in a puzzle at some point. Now, if it's a puzzle you've never seen before, see if you can figure out how it was created. If you can figure out how it was made, it'll give you clues on how to complete it. Also, keep track of your puzzle pieces at all time. If for no other reason, then, a puzzle without a piece is a puzzle that'll send you to tribal council. How's that for philosophy? Then, ask yourself what you can identify from an uncompleted puzzle. Corners, sides, a dragon's head, a dragon's tail. And if the, if the identified piece can't be placed immediately, put it to the side. Now, this will be hard in the heat of a challenge, but if you're stuck, take a step back. Take a step to the side. Another angle may help you notice something you've been missing. And finally, these puzzles are made very precisely by a five-star art department. If the piece doesn't fit, don't force it, because it probably doesn't belong there. I mean, obviously, you can jiggle it a bit, but don't go dropping elbows on it. So that's it. Seven tips that will get you future survivors one step closer to that million dollar check. Do you have any good advice I left out? Uh, do you have a favorite survivor puzzle you want to talk about? Let me know in the comments section. And if you enjoyed this video, please drop a like, hit the subscribe button. Till then, I'm Gordon Holmes. Uh, and thank you for your time. And as always, the tribe is, uh, oh God, um, line spoken.